I am back with Meg to talk about Love Island USA season four. Yes. Um, uh, it was a a lot happened this week. I mean, where do where do we even start? I, I took a we, lot of notes. <laughs> we lost two people. We'll start with the two people we lost. Do you want to talk about them? Um. So the first one we lost is Tyler. Um. Kind of saw it coming. No real feelings about it at all. <laughs> yeah, they kind of screwed him with the way they did it. I thought they could have kept him around for some more drama, honestly. Yeah, he was kind of boring, though. And I don't think that him and Serenity were really going to, you know, come to fruition with anything. So it's not really a huge loss. I agree. But then we lost your your number one from last week. I knew Courtney was fake as fuck. I knew it. Yeah. We saw more of Courtney this week, and I've just kind of realized she's kind of real, like, dippy, you know? Like, there's not a whole lot going on. Yeah, that's what I said last week. She's like the the female, what's his name, Jesse. There's just not yeah. a lot going on. They're just yeah. fake and kind of dumb. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I do, I do like her new pair. I guess we'll talk about it when we get to them. Um, but we did lose Philippe. And I feel like kind of in the same way about Tyler, it's just like, he was kind of boring. We didn't really see hardly any of him last week. And, you know, really up until the, I feel like Courtney was trying to look for a reason to not be with him anymore. And, um, you know, so we did see a little bit come out of him then when she started having about it. But I mean, he really hasn't brought a whole lot to the show. Yeah, but they just missed out on their room of seclusion or whatever it's called. I don't know what it's called because like they're opening that here in the next few days, and we know that's where Courtney and him wanted to be this whole time. Yeah, in the boom boom room. Yes. yes. Well, we shall begin our uh, couple rankings, I guess. Um, we're kind of all over the place. We have two in common, and then the rest were kind of opposites. So that's not surprising. <laughs> We will start, if I can find where to type this, with the uh, the one we had in common. We had him, we both had him in second place, which is Sydney and Isaiah, who comes out the first place on average. Did I not rank that first? Um, maybe you did, actually. I wrote it wrong. I just feel like, um, let me find my notes here. I, I feel like since all of the drama and they've come back together and kind of were in their feelings, they seem to be the strongest couple. I don't see them being separated too easily. I think it'll take a little bit more now. He did kind of drop the album, which was a little awkward very soon. Um, but I think out of what we have, they're the best. Yeah, they're one of the only couples that all of, most of these couples aren't working, right? Am I crazy in thinking that? Yeah, no. What so, do you think? Tell me about. Tell me about the bro code. Like, does Isaiah's beef with Andy? Does the bro code like really apply in this situation? It came across very TV to me. Isaiah yeah. came across like not serious about it, almost smirking at times. Honestly, I didn't believe. Yeah, it seems like kind of a bit much, especially for people that just met like a week ago. I just, how much bro code can there be at that? Is it is it an instantaneous thing? Or like, do you have bro code with every guy in the world? Or- I don't think they could have bro code friends? after a week, honestly. I don't think okay. so. And I didn't believe it anyway. So yeah, I ain't buying it. I think he was being dramatic. Yeah, okay, same. Any thoughts on Sydney? Um, I liked her a little less this week, but I still like her. You liked her less because she was less dramatic. Yeah, that's probably why. <laughs> <laughs> I do like them together. I think they're a strong couple, and I I do think that they will they'll get deeper into it. I'm not sold yet, honestly, but we'll see. I, I, out of everybody, they do probably have the best connection for now. I liked another couple more, and that's why I ranked number one, but one of them kind of annoyed me in this last episode I watched. 
sometimes it just takes a little bit of separation for you to like really realize what you're feeling for somebody else. So I think the drama, while it was unwarranted and kind of stupid and a waste of time, I think it did help Sydney and I, well, Sydney at least realize where she really wants to be right now. Yeah. Isaiah is the one I'm not sold on because he never, he put on that big show about the bro code, but he never, before that, never really seemed that into her. Yeah, but now he's telling her he loves her. Yeah, he's, the Pisces on this show are driving me crazy because I'm a Pisces. He's <laughs> one of them. <laughs> Any other thoughts on these two? No. Well, we'll move on to number two, which is my doing. It's Serenity and Chaz. Serenity mm -hmm. was getting on my nerves in the last episode, though, to be honest. When they were playing that game. Yeah. I mean, I think they have potential, but they're so new that I really couldn't put a lot of weight behind their ranking yet. Um, although I did place Courtney and Bryce kind of high, so I guess I, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of a hypocrite. But I just feel like they... I don't feel like she sought it out. You know, she was paired with him by his sister. So I'm still, and I think that she sees the potential in him, but I'm still kind of waiting to see what they could really come to be. Yeah. He's really the one driving it. Cause he just comes out like he really likes her. So that's why. He does. It's a little much. Although we kind of see that with new people because they get to watch the show before they come in. So I feel like they've already kind of chosen on the back end who they're interested in and come in with a plan. And so you know, with the with the Islanders that are already there, not knowing these new people right off the bat, they do have a little bit more of an advantage knowing, like, this is what I want and this is what I'm going to go for. That's a good point. But, like, Serenity, maybe I'll ask you, because you're a woman. Is she not a little little too picky? At first, I liked her, and she's like, but, like, she's picky. She's really picky. I'm, I think she is picky, but honestly, like, looking at the choices in the house right now, like, you're allowed to be picky, honestly. Like, you don't have to settle just because you have to be matched up with somebody in you know I mean in order to stay. And I think that she knows that she's worth more than kind of what's been coming her way. And that's why she should be allowed to be picky. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's true, but also like, how do you play around these dynamics? Cause can you really be picky? Like they, some of them seem friendly, especially when Jesse went and started doing all this stuff with Serenity and oh, so Serenity weird. and Deb are very close. So that was just weird by Jesse. So weird. Yeah, it was really weird. I mean, I feel like she's being picky, but at the same time, she I think that she is giving Chaz a chance and she sees, you know, the, the good points that he brings to the table. So I wouldn't say that she's overly picky. How seriously were you taking that last game in this last episode from Sunday night? Because she seemed like she was taking it very seriously. Yes. I think it depends on where you're at as a couple. Like, Serenity and Chaz, I wouldn't, if I were her, I wouldn't take it that seriously because how many of those conversations have they really gotten into outside of that 30 minutes that they were kind of forced to share this info? Whereas, like, you know, Sydney and Isaiah, Andy and Maddie, I would expect them to know more based on, just because they've had the chance to get to know the other person better. So I think the seriousness depends on, where you're at in your relationship. That's why she was starting to annoy me though. I felt like she was taking that game too seriously, but they're like, no, what do you expect? Yeah. But if she really just 10 minutes before was like X, Y, and Z, and he still didn't remember, I could kind of get that. I guess that might be true. Any other thoughts on these two? Um, I mean, Serenity's best pairing so far. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I kind of like him. I didn't really like his use of the phrase like window shopping when he was going to be like talking to all of the girls. Like, they aren't like products to be bought, but okay, I understood what he meant. I think the sibling thing is going to get weird though. Like, a, we've never seen siblings as Islanders before. And I just think that when it comes to the games and like watching all this like raunchy shit that they're doing in front of the camera, I mean, it's just kind of awkward. They make awkward faces every time the other ones. Yeah, and I can feel the awkwardness from them. I'm not, I don't really like it. <laughs> I mean, don't you think they should be, be like when they started off, they seemed like they were going to have this like alliance in the game. But since then, they haven't really. They should be smarter at the game part of it since they're brother and sister, I feel like. 
Yeah, but I mean, maybe they're not coming in to play the game. Maybe they really are coming in to form connections. It's kind of the point. You win by making connections. Like, do you? Because last season's winners were like buddies. Yeah, that's true. All right, number three. And I did this backwards because I feel like the uh, the drama's on the bottom. Uh, number three is Andy and Maddie. Yeah. Um, let me see what I wrote about these guys. I mean, I don't think they're anything. I don't think anything's real here. I mean, I think it... I feel bad for Maddie feeling like she's like never good enough. That's a shitty, shitty feeling, especially for a female. I think we carry a lot of weight when it comes to feelings like that. So I can resonate with her and I feel really bad. But then you're in this dynamic, in this situation where kind of what choice did she have but to go back to him? He's the only one that she has any level of a relationship with. So when it comes to recoupling, I'm not surprised that she chose him. But I hope that better comes for her in the future. Yeah, I mean, I get it too. I understand why she chose him. I just don't. She, she has to feel like second best now. You're right. I like that this brought out her personality though, because when she first started, I was like, oh, she's gonna be boring. But she, she gave it back pretty good when she was scoring those couple episodes. Yeah, yeah, and I appreciated her speech. I think um, Debs was better, but I like that she's kind of saying like, all right. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. You came and apologized. You made a mistake. Let's move on. I'll give you another chance. But there's no like number three after this. If you're a douche again, like you're a douche for life. So, how do you feel about Andy? He's such a lame. Yeah, I I I have zero feelings about Andy. I think he brings absolutely nothing to the table. He fucked up. He got screwed over. Sydney wanted to be back with Isaiah. He ruined his re a lot of the trust. You know, if this whole broker thing was like legit, he ruined a lot of his trust with the other guys in the house. And, you know, now he's really going to have to watch himself because if he puts himself in another situation like that, he's got to be sure that that's going to work out or else he's going to be booted. Yep. I agree. Do you have any other thoughts on this couple? Um, No. I have a lot of feelings on Timmy, so when we get there, I'll have a lot more to say. <laughs> I might be disagreeing, but we'll see. I'm sure you will. <laughs> we are we are on them, actually, thanks to me. Number four is Bria and Timmy. All right. Do you want to go first? No, I want to hear your feelings on Timmy. Uh, let's just start with the conversation that he had with Zita about her you know asking if he could see them outside of the house and he immediately is just like lies to her and then turns around and tells the guys how he felt uncomfortable like the question was too premature but I, if you're so humble as you like to say like why not just be honest with her in that moment and let her know because then the following conversation after that she didn't he said the right things, but I feel like she is already like, well, you told me one thing earlier and now you're kind of backtracking. So there's some trust missed there. Whereas if he would have just said, I would like to see us outside the house, but I, you know, I just want to give more time to let this grow before I can, you know, really say for sure. And da 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 da, da. And I think she would have been okay with that answer. So I really have a problem with guys who say the right thing all of the time. I don't think you're genuine if you're constantly telling the girl what she wants to hear. And I know that you like the drama, right? But I'm looking at it from like a female perspective, relationship perspective. I'd rather a guy tell me the wrong thing and then come back and be like, what I said wasn't whatever, you know, appropriate or kind and I recognize that and I apologize and we can move on instead of always saying the right thing just to say the right thing that's disgenuine I mean yeah I guess I guess but I felt like this is where I think we disagree I felt like Zita's the one that actually wrapped well, she's up a mess. I'm not we're not I'm not saying this isn't just about you know <laughs> together they're absolutely toxic and she's she's seeking him out well, at the same time, trying to show him, like, you can't be like this with me. You can't play around with like this with me. You know, go be with Bria if that's what you want. But then she's, you know, going and waking him up from a nap and catching him out, 
you know, in the little area outside the bedrooms. And I'm, I don't think that she's completely innocent in it either, but I think that Timmy is a gaslighter and I can't stand him. <laughs> I think you're going a little too hard on Timmy. I can't lie. <laughs> Just I mean, wait. But, but I didn't, I ranked Bria and Timmy last because I don't think that she's going to put up with that bullshit. The one time that no. she catches him in this, in this kind of situation or an, another kind of, she keeps giving him these, you know, all right, I'll let it go. I'll let it go with these shots about Zeta, but it's going to, that one is going to come and she's going to say she's done because he's gaslighting both of them. Oh yeah. I like Bria too. That's another reason I rated them higher. But, I like Bria too, and I didn't like Zeta because of the conversation or how she handled the conversation with her. Well, I, Timmy and Zeta, they're both Geminis, and that's just I'm gonna turn this to astrology. Geminis oh, are so messy. Gemini? They're both this Geminis. Is why I hate him. They are both Geminis, and they just can't. That's why they're the stars of the show, though, because it's just nonstop drama. Let's mess with Female Geminis aren't as bad as male Geminis, though. Okay, I don't know if I agree. Well, I've never had to be in a relationship with a female Gemini. I've been in a relationship with male Geminis, and they're awful. It's just, it's more of the same on the other side of the coin. I just, truth emitters are like the worst kind of liar. Like, and Timmy is that. He's a, he's a truth emitter. And it's just like, they're worse than actual lying. Yeah, but I mean, it was only one time. Can't give the guy a break. It's, not, it's constant, though. It I is don't know constant. if I agree with that. Uh, okay. We'll just see. What, what was the other time? I mean, I don't... It's not just the one time of truth omitting. It's the gaslighting and the going back and forth and the... He's, he's telling Bria, like, okay, yeah, I want to get to know you, but I'm also holding this over here in my back pocket. And then, you know, it's... I feel like in the game, not heated for no reason of course he's gonna pick zeta and of course she knew he was gonna pick zeta so i don't know why like jeff made it this big deal i mean he already knows that and zeta had nothing really to do with that it was her reaction to it it's just they're toxic they're both toxic they need to stay away from each other i don't know i like them i can't lie but i do think they're both very dramatic i just feel like i felt like on social media at first timmy was getting so much of the shit when I like Zeta too, but she was the one that I thought was playing the game. Like she's trying to make him jealous now. Of course, she's toxic. She's not acting maturely. She's women, we've done this. I've done this. I've acted like this. Well, if you don't want me when I want you, then I'm gonna do something to make you want me. And then because then I can win the game. And it's not the game of Love Island, it's the game of the you know chase as far as relationships go and like that shit fucking sucks once you're on the other side of it and you can look back like that shit's so awful but I mean, it's not just women. after I've done she that. yelled at him like across the villa she could come back and communicate with him like how she was feeling why she reacted that way and that she knew that that was an immature way to act and i appreciate that when people can recognize that within themselves but she hasn't gotten better she's gotten worse yeah any other thoughts on bria um, no, not really. I just don't think that she's, I don't, I rated them really low because I just really don't see them taking this to like the end at no. all. There's not like an inkling of me think that things still stay together. I will say she's the most attractive woman in the game. Mostly I think she has the least correct plastic surgery. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, I think Serenity is beautiful. Yes, she is. But she has faith. Number five is Courtney and Bryce. Sorry. I'd rather the fake boobs than the fake lips. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would agree, I guess. So what are your thoughts on Courtney and Bryce coming in next? Um, I did put them in second just because I feel like they did just instantaneously connect. And I like the way that Bryce is communicating with her. And I think he kind of wants this pretty little thing on his arm as he, you know, he's in finance. He tells you all the time. So like, I just think that he wants this like Stepford wife kind of, that's just going to be there and follow him around and look pretty in dresses and stuff. And, but I like that he came in, he knew what he wanted. He went right for her and she, I won't, I don't want to say fell for it, but they connected immediately. So I rated them high because I feel like their, their connection is genuine and I can see them kind of going a little while. Yeah, I mean, I guess she has more of a connection with him than the, like, surface level with 
Felipe, but I still don't trust this. I think she's going to be fake the entire game. Just go oh, yeah. with the new shiny toy every time she can. Well, it, I thought it was a little pretentious of her, the comment that she made about like, well, of course I can just go and like fuck whoever I want. Like, look at me. <laughs> so I just was like the hardest eye roll ever when she made yeah. that comment. Agreed. Have you seen her before picture? No. <laughs> I'm going to have to send it to you if I find it again. It's oh, yeah, like, I'm definitely interested. <laughs> if it was real, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a big difference, I guess. Yeah. I, no, I don't really have anything else about them. Yeah, Bryce is new, and he's pretty boring. He's so. kind of boring. Well, then we will move on to Deb and Jesse. Poor Deb. I mean, God. They did the best in that game, if anybody cares. But, like, Jesse's so weird. Jesse is just, I don't know, a player uh, just to be a player. Like, is he a player or does he just not, like, have a brain? Bulls. I think it's Bulls. <laughs> They did, do brain, well, but... they did do well in the game, but I think it's because they've been connected so long that, and all they've done is talk since they're not really like getting it on or making out or anything. So they should know each other really well. Yeah, you're right. And they were practicing a lot before the game. Yeah. Although their question seemed a little odd. Yeah. Well, the ones that made air, I guess. Right. But I just. <sighs> I'm not really sure why he chose to do what he did with Serenity like back to back times, let alone once, yeah. and not use that as an opportunity to just like get down and dirty with Deb, which I feel like they're they both claim to be like awkward in that department, but I'm not seeing it in the games. So why I, I don't understand why they can be like that with other people and not each other. Yeah, I don't understand it either. I think it's his fault. Yeah, he's weird. He is weird. And I just don't, I mean, she's obviously very vocal about not opening up to people very easily and like letting that wall down. I don't think he's doing a very good job, like breaking that down and getting up. No, I think it's going to make her keep it up, right? Yeah, exactly. Why wouldn't it? Yeah. So, I mean, we'll see. I put them forth. They're right in the middle for me. They were my last place. I really like Deb, but I, Jesse just does everything wrong so far for two weeks straight. Yeah, I mean, we'll see kind of how he handles this next week with her, you know. I mean, her speech was pretty hardcore when she chose him. So he's either going to, like, pick it up or she's going to be done. Yeah, but my problem with her is, like, she's too nice so far. Like, is she really going to be done? Is she? I'm not convinced. Who else was she supposed to pick? I mean, that's true. But, like, will she... If more guys come in, will she move? Try to move on now, or keep waiting for a third time to get fucked? I think if a guy comes in and shows her the kind of attention that she's missing from Jesse, for sure, she's gonna turn her head pretty quick. I hope so. Last place is Zeta and Jeff. Yeah. Um. I think Jeff is a player, and I think Zeta has a type, but it, he's another one that was, like, kind of saying all the right things, but then when it came to backing up what he was talking about, he very quickly switched to the other side of this. I mean, he kept telling her, like, I know that you still have feelings for Timmy. Like, I'm going to make you forget him. I understand where you're coming from. And then the second they're in a game and her feelings are brought to light, he immediately is like, what are you doing? You're telling me this and you're still interested in him, but we already knew that. And you were supposed to be supportive of that and showing her why she should be with you. And now you're not. I mean, you're right. But when Zeta's like clearly using you to make him jealous, like how else is he supposed to feel? He was giving yeah. me very much, I don't know his astrology sign. He was giving me very much Taurus who don't like being like fucked with. It's like, fuck you, whatever. Is this the games you want to play? Then I'm out. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I, I agree. I just feel like his reaction was also a little bit unwarranted. 
It was like yeah. too much in the moment. The whole like, well, then why don't you do that? Like, you know, have a conversation with her after. Stew on your thoughts a little bit. Like, it was a little much. Yeah, he was too salty too fast. Yeah. But that sucks to be the one sitting there like, I like you. I'm trying to tell you, like, I like you and um, how, you know, why you should pick me and you're sitting here like pissed off over your ex and his new girl right in front of me and using me as bait and like I mean I can get why he feels that way I just think it's been what two days since he moved in so yeah I don't know his personality enough but I guess we'll find out Tauruses are rough both my kids are Tauruses I don't know if he's a Taurus but that's the energy he was given oh okay <laughs> Any other thoughts on these two? No. Mm -hmm. Any final thoughts overall? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm getting into it now. I definitely was like paying more attention to things that were going on this week. And um, last week was good. I got a feel of kind of what we were going to be talking about. So um, I'm interested to have conversations with you about relationships. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's very different than what we would usually talk about. So are you ranking based on like just this week and whether or not like the longevity is there or if you like them, if they're bringing something to the show? Because I'm ranking on like longevity of the relationship. I guess I'm ranking a little bit of everything. I'm ranking like if they actually have a connection, but also just if I like at least one person in that couple, unless it's Deb who's stuck with Jesse. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess I'm a little bit of both, too. But like, I don't really like Courtney, but I feel like her and Bryce will last a little, a little bit longer, which is, and they, the genuine connection is there, which is what boosted that up for me, so. Yeah, they do have a connection. I mean, I honestly think Zeta and Timmy have a connection, despite them being quite possibly toxic. They for sure have a connection. I just... I think I feel so strongly about it because every guy I've ever dated before my husband is Timmy. Were they all Geminis? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and Pisces. <laughs> oh, wow. Apologies for Pisces. Yeah, I just don't have good luck with Geminis. And I just think that I can just spot the gaslighting from like a mile away now. And it just grinds my gears the way that... And she's like putty to it. Like she just keeps... It draws her in so hard. And that's that's what makes that connection so tight though, I think, is is just that draw to each other. And when you have that toxicity in there, that pull to each other, that like magnetic pull is so much stronger, I think, because you're like, they give you excitement and drama and they, you know, make your heart race and you make your blood boil and they make, they piss you off. Anybody that gives you a hard emotion about something on either end, honestly, is going to pull you into them a little bit. And honestly, they're the only couple that has that so far. Yeah, but it doesn't mean that that's a good situation. <laughs> It's not always bad if they can eventually grow and mature. Yeah, right. but like how likely is that to happen? Like Courtney I mean on this game, probably not likely. But. Probably not. Courtney made a comment about like, oh, the the toxic was in front of us and we all chose differently. And but I just don't see I guess I didn't see the toxicity in Felipe outside of the fact that they were kind of just together physically. Yeah, but they were the only other ones that had that like I felt like I think it could have got there had she given him more time to have conversations like real types of conversations I also think the language barrier was there and she's just not yeah. smart enough to figure her way around that <laughs> probably <laughs> uh no it's interesting it's getting deeper the connections are getting stronger the new people coming in are gonna make things a little bit more interesting my favorite episode is the one they go to the second villa with like the other set of people. So yeah, I'm just really be. kind of holding out to see. I mean, whoever survives that is going to be like number one the rest of the time. So, well, I am glad they are bringing the drama. The Gemini's are bringing all the drama that we can ask for, I guess. Who do you think is going to be the first couple in the boom boom room? <sighs> Damn, that's a good question. I don't know. I mean, I could see Sydney and Isaiah being that they're the strongest couple and people want them because it's voters, right? I don't know. I think I've only watched last season. But 
it would be just kind of really interesting and entertaining if it was Bria and Timmy. That's who I want it to be, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> but I really, I think they'll give it to Sydney and Isaiah. I think they will too. But if it is Bria and Timmy, then I don't know, it might be over for Zeta. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just here for the drama if that happens. If it was <laughs> Deb and Jesse, like, what a boring boom, boom, room. What a waste of a night. I don't think it would be them. They're so awkward. They are really awkward, but it would be funny. And if he couldn't pull it out, like, solo in a bedroom alone, then I think you know there's your answer, Deb. True. True. All right. Well, we should end it there. It was a good week of Love Island. I'm glad it uh, ramped up. Yeah. Hopefully it'll keep going. I think it will. It's only downhill from here. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs>